we will have two minutes, uh, 20 minutes for question and answer. From all of the panelists that we have. Yes, please. Just a quick question from the Gabriel Marantia. When you say that the theocracy or Islamic State cannot have a stability, what do you mean by stability? I mean, is it the, con yeah. is it yeah. the continuation the, of the governance? Because uh, we have, for example, yeah, it's a very Saudi simple, Arabia. Yeah, it's very simple. Of course, uh, in a democratic system, or even in other form of non-theological governance, you have to have an agreement where, at a certain point, you recognize an authority in this one way or another. Uh, in the form of most extreme form of theocracy, of course, in particular the Islamic one, this will never happen because, of course, when you can only claim that the only authority is God, so between women, men, and men will be no different. How you can be superior? One of the elements is this: the people in continuous will find, even in Islamic history, you find this with the Caliph, and all of them died really inside their own bed. Uh, and there will be a continual uh, revolution, if we want, and we can see this in Algeria with the fish uh, or other form of. Uh, 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 movement, even in science, more movement, where there is a continued um, instability exactly for this kind of ideological power. It, it, you can every time use it in order to depose uh, any other form that you don't like. So every time you form new groups, they will try to um, not just change the leaders, but change completely the system. So you have this kind of volcano that they never. But what's the distinguishing feature of this instability? Uh, with the other instabilities in other authoritarian regimes. The other authoritarian regimes are facing the I mean, continuous instability, continuous movement well, against them. Different well. kinds. Yeah. What's the distinguishing feature of, in the Islamic world? I mean, for example, think of the Saudi Arabia. I mean, from the 1932, they have formed the government and still they are stable. They are running the country. Think of Iran, which is very well, I mean, distinguished. So, uh, the government. Of course, if you have the, the military power and things on, any any uh, dictators can maintain and can maintain. I don't think of, uh, Saudi Arabia will remain stable forever. I think Iran will destabilize quite soon, actually. Uh, but the, 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 it, it, the problem is, in some cases, internal. What I'm speaking about is uh, uh, Islamic movement. They are not still in, in, in the state and they want to produce this theocracy. I don't know how much theocracy is left in Saudi Arabia or, because another thing that's too long to discuss and discuss in the book, is the transformation of what is a, a theocracy in actually a not theocratical but actual oppressive government. This is the case of Iran. I don't consider Iran anymore a theocracy. It's a kind of very interesting, and we can have a discussion, but a lost, probably the death of Khomeini, uh, the, the, the elements of uh, theocratical elements have become more and more kind of oppressive regime and Saudi Arabia is the same, you can use some kind of rhetoric but it's lost the, if it never had, the theocratical element. Certain this is very different from other movement, uh, for example in, in Egypt or so on, they want actually proper theocratical. So, any other question? So, I have a question myself from Professor Ahmed or Musa. You mentioned something common between democracy and secularism. What was the relationship, in your opinion, between democracy and secularism, especially in Islamic world? Well, um, I would say that um, the most important thing is that uh, in democracy itself, uh, in secularism, we're talking about uh, separation of uh, state uh, power um, from politics, right? So we're saying that uh, uh, we're, we're talking about separation between religion and state. So state power, religion should not have its power or its grip on, on, on state, right? So whereas, uh, and in democracy itself, we say that the power should be vested to the people. It's a government of people, for the people, by the people. So meaning to say that uh, this whole concept has a basis in the Quran itself. So when the Quran says about وَأَمْرُهُمْ شُرَّ وَبَيْنَهُمْ That means that uh, um, in matters that affects them, in matters that affect them, then there must be mutual consultation among them. Means that it has um, a specific injunction for mutual consultation. 
or in modern parlance, is what we call as democracy. So I would say that, you know, like, in the Islamic system itself, there is um, a tendency, there is a, a, a room for, for democratic um, for a, a democratic process to flourish, right? And in secularism, is that we're trying to say that uh, even the secularism is trying to say that there's no role, no specific role for government to basically to interject its uh, power right. in determining the role of state, for example. Then the most important part of it is that it must not be, uh, how do I say, uh, secluded to realms of just personal domains. Yes, it may play a role, right? But its role is to ensure that, to ensure that justice is there, and to ensure that you know that everyone is equal before the law. So that is the, the concept. That there is a concept that that no one should be uh, oppressed just because of one's identity. Be be him a Christian or be him a, a sexual minority, for example. Like he has the right to live in the government. So that's the importance of it. So the definition for democracy, uh, for secularism? Yeah, first, as I said just now, secularism itself, like I, like uh, Professor uh, Ahmad uh, uh, mentioned just now, it's, it's not basically the French concept of laicity, of trying to say to, to try and um, uh, diminish the role of religion at all, right, in a state. But to say that a state cannot use religion to enforce its ideas to the people. So you minimize it to enforcing the yes, yes. religion. Yes. If yes. it does not enforce, it's not. It's not. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> Other questions? So I myself have two questions from the other panelists. So uh, you mentioned, so uh, the names of some reforms about their opinions uh, on secularism, especially Shadina, Shabistari, Talal Assad, and the others. Uh, what do you think that this opinion, opinion of the reformists that you mentioned, the names, is it familiar with among the mainstream of the Muslims? <laughs> um, or is it academic? This is, well, this is what I worry about. I, um, I wonder if um, it isn't as mainstream as it could be um, because um, these, many of the arguments for political secularism, especially to protect a religious society, um, are, very, are quite complicated arguments. And I think um, people still need to get past the secularization thesis and this old two worlds theory, which puts religion against secularism. So my hunch, although I'm not an anthropologist and I haven't done any studies or surveys, my hunch is that there is um, still um, widespread misconception towards um, the post-Islamist argument for um, political secularism and for secular democracy. Um, but I'd actually like to ask you that question. And <laughs> what, what, what do you think in Iran is the um, consciousness of this? Was, I will explain later, but okay. Iran is completely different from the other Islamic countries. Of course. Uh, most of the countries, I think, these ideas that we negotiate today, discuss it today, or the other sessions, are only in academy and so far from the mainstream of the Muslims. When we have election in Egypt, in Tunisia, in other countries, Libya, so in everywhere we can we see something that is far from our understanding about secularism, about Sharia, about radicalism, about these things. So something that is I want to emphasize and highlight it is uh, what's the weight of these ideas that we discuss in such a session such as the conference among the Muslims in actuality of the life of Muslims is something that I want to mention. Iran is something else, I will, I will consider it later. And the last question from the, the Tehran in Assad. Uh, 
What's your idea? I, I hear two times to your <coughs> presentation today and the other conference. Uh, do you believe in some kind of secularism among Muslims? Or you think it's a Western uh, and uh, it's not domestic concepts, so the Muslim should not accept it? What's your idea? Thanks for the first question. Of course, if um, secularism um, is, um, um, for example, like I, I mentioned, um, you know, um, dispensing or getting rid of the services of the clergy, then of course it, it is to be welcomed and um, it's already, I mean, the, the um, true genuine Islam is already very much secular. That in a way, um, in, in a clear, um, concise response to your question, yes, I mean, it's religious secularism is, is there already and it's a, a desirable thing. Um, but, you see, the, the point is that um, we, it, it won't do us any good um, to ignore some of the pitfalls, you see, and we already have um, an example which has suffered, you know, from the pitfalls, and we don't want to uh, fall into the same trap. I mean, there are dangers, you know, as with everything, there's all fat, as, as is said in, in Persian. Every fruit, every tree has got... Um, it's prone to get some diseases, to beget some disease. And, and it's those diseases which are very, I mean, you know, um, the question of, for example, environmental damage and, and destruction and all that, um, the threatening of our, really, it's, it's bigger than um, the terrorism or any other, any, any other threat. And if you really search deep enough, you know, the roots of it are to be found in, in, the, um, in some form of the modernist um, worldview. I mean, the, the fact that you, you want to conquer nat nature and the roots of it go back to people like Francis Bacon, who said um, knowledge and power uh, lie in the, same, in the same place. And nowadays you get the Muslim uh, school of Canberra using the same, uh, you know, motto power lies in knowledge. So the roots of these, these problems go back to you know, such worldviews. And th that is what I try to get at, the worldviews. And they have these um, you know, diseases that they could beget. And it's an it's a unintended consequence. My question is about the main characteristic of secularism, differentiation between a state and church, not only the role of uh, clergy. Uh, what's your opinion about this characteristic? Differentiation between church and the state, or Islam and the state and mosque among the Muslims. Is there any role for you in secularism or Islamic secularism? Um, I mean, I'm not in a position to really, uh, uh, you would uh, better, uh, you would know better than anyone else. This is a big, big um, subject you can't say in a, in a yes or no. but. Um, of course, I mean, the case of Islam, sorry, I, in your presence, I mean, you are actually the expert on this. Um, you know, I don't feel uh, <laughs> very, um, <laughs> you know, to, to speak on these things, but as you know, there are, um, um, in, in the core values, there are, you know, it's almost identical, Islam with Christianity. But when it comes to, uh, you know, the real world and the forums, there are severe um, differences which have to be taken into account. So, any other question? If you have any questions from the others also, then we have about five minutes. Do you have any questions from the other panelists? So, thank you so much.